Okay. All right. So what you're looking at here, and I know you're kind of quickly copying this down. You're going to need it. Um, the, um, it's basically the liability insurance premium. So it's this is liability. It could be full coverage. It's very similar to if you get full coverage around here. Um, there is a couple different numbers, and I want to explain this. this. So now we talked about purchasing your vehicle. We talked about the loans you could take out for it. Now we have to talk about insuring the vehicle. And then the next thing we'll do is we'll talk about gas and filling it with fuel and tires and all that good stuff. So we're going to talk about the practicality of it. Yeah. So we'll talk about the practicality of it and, you know, owning a vehicle. But now we got to talk about insuring because it is required by law. You have to have insurance on the car. It could be a liability like this or it could be full coverage. We'll explain that here in a minute. I'll give you a little bit of time. Uh, Mr. Graff, I'm going to print this out for you. Okay. Where do you want my brush? So, uh, I'm just going to put it back here. So you don't have to run anywhere. I have my own private printer. So, isn't wouldn't liability be easier to get? Because then you would get it's, it costs significantly less. So, but then it's only if you get if person hits you, you get money out of it. And if you have full coverage, you want to get much because uh, okay. there's a difference. We'll explain. Yeah, that. yeah. Okay to see? Yeah. Okay, good. All right. High risk, holy cow, that's Dalton. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about the difference in liability. I know some of you are filling out the chart, filling in numbers, that's great. I'm going to leave it up there. It's going to be up there a while today. All right. Um, let's talk about liability. Liability. Okay, liability insurance. If you are liable in an accident, means you are responsible for the accident. Liability coverage uh, will cover you. It'll cover the accident and the people that are in it. It will not cover anything else. It will just cover the damages you caused. Okay. If if somebody hits you, that's a completely different situation. His right? insurance. Yeah, their insurance would take care of you and get your things squared away. It doesn't matter. You have liability. It doesn't matter. Liability covers others. So the scary part about liability, if you get in an accident, you are you are responsible for your own coverage for your own vehicle. So whatever damage that happened in your car, you have to cover that. That's liability is only covering the other people that were that were in the accident. That's the terrifying part of liability insurance. Okay, so that's the thing you need to be careful of. Okay, it's it's just covering. You know, if you were liable, it will cover the others that you actually caused uh, harm to. Now let's talk about the actual numbers that are involved here. Um, I'll just pick one of these. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to pick. So when you pick one of these, you have to pick one of the personal injury claims, and then you have to pick one of the property numbers. Okay, so I'll let you guys pick. Um, when you pick, you have to pick one of the top col or top rows and top rows. So somebody pick one of these top 10. 10, 20? Okay. 10, 20. Hey, attention, please, for a quick okay. announcement. Um, Jamie from Athletico will be here uh, in a little bit here. If there are any students that need to see her, please uh, come to the office at this time to sign up. Uh, teachers, please allow the, those students that need to sign up for Jamie to come in uh, real quick and do that. Thank you so much. All right, now, personal injury here for liability. What this number, so we're going to look at the first number. So we said the 1020 row, okay? All right, so here's how it works, the 1020. This number is the maximum payout per person. Payout per person. So that means, you know, what 10 stands for is it will be a maximum payout of $10,000 damages to one single person that was covered in that accident, okay? Maximum of 10 per person. The second number is the total maximum. It's the, it's the total max for the entire uh, scene. Total max for all. So 10,000. So this would, this, for the total accident, 
you'd have $20,000 insurance covering everything. So that means if you can do a max payout of, of $10,000 per person, max payout, and you have a total max for the entire scene of 20, it means you can really only have two people covered if they max out your insurances. Most people won't, they'll have a couple of scrapes and bruises, so you'll pay a little bit to each person. But, that, but you'll that still also include the cars for like... Cars? No, that is different. This is only personal injuries. Now, the second number on the other hand, the property damage, that's the that's the next number. So um so on if we pick one of those, pick ten. one of these properties. Five? Ten. Ten. Okay, we're gonna pick ten. 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 Okay, so we're picking ten for property. Okay, so now when you see this number, this will be the third number on an insurance card. So how that looks, if you're looking at this, this is how it'd be written on most insurances. It'd be written like this. What were you talking about? Okay. This number? this would cover property damage. So this would cover all the property that was damaged. And so it would be a max payout, max payout of ten thousand dollars. Now, that may seem like a lot to you, it may seem like not a lot. Okay, if you get in a very if you get in an accident with a very expensive car, that one's gonna hurt a little bit because your liability insurance will max out at 10 and you have to cover the rest, personally out of pocket. So liability is a risk, you are taking a risk. Now it is a significantly cheaper insurance, significantly cheaper insurance. Um, and, and there's a reason why it's significantly cheaper because you're probably gonna pay out of pocket if you get in any form of an accident. So that's what you have to be thinking about, okay? All right, so um, so this is what it would look like on an insurance card. You'd probably see the three numbers, so you can tell it's personal, you know, property, or personal are the first two numbers, and then property is the third number. This is the same system if you had full coverage. Full coverage would cover yourself and the others. So even if your car got damaged and you were the one causing it, your insurance would cover that. On, on liability, it doesn't. You have to pay out of pocket to cover your own if you're in a liability situation. So be careful of that. Because um, I know some people like they get a really like kind of busted up car. Like I'm just going to pick a liability because you have to have insurance, and they're going to pick the cheapest insurance possible. But if you cause an accident because you have a cheap vehicle, you're at risk. So um, now, if you take out a loan, so you know how like last time we talked about taking loans out for vehicles, you cannot take liability insurance on that. I know it's cheaper, but you can't. You have to have full coverage until the loan is paid off. It's required by state. So. Um, so that's something that they'll know. And they will know if you have liability insurance, it's marked right on the loan. So the bank um, the bank that you took the loan out for will call you personally and say, hey, you have liability insurance, you cannot be doing that. You have to switch your insurance for right now. So, um, and if they don't, they will come repossess the car. <laughs> so, um, because you're Why not would they, the you because, because you didn't have the right insurance on it. So. Or they'll just drop your coverage, and then you're going to be held in, you know, for a state for uh, not having insurance. So, and that's even bigger fine than just paying insurance. So, um, now let's talk about high risk, average risk, and low risk. This this type of idea really comes down to the area you live in. Um, it comes down to your age. It comes down to your sex. I know they're kind of sexist in that, but they play the numbers game, and most accidents happen with boys on average. I know that's sexist, but on average in the whole United States, most accidents are caused by men. And so they have a higher, a higher insurance policy. And uh, Graf, you're not being on my camera there, but so. All right. Okay. All right. Um, so yeah, so just keep that in mind that, um, you know, the higher risk insurance could be uh, could be a policy that you might be under because maybe you're 16 years of age, maybe you just got a speeding ticket, and so you probably lost your license if you didn't. Um, but you went automatically to higher risk insurance, not super expensive, and they could tell you that you have to be in a certain coverage zone. Um, you could just live in a really bad part of town, and so maybe you live in a really rough neighborhood, and they'll have you at high risk insurance because there's lots of crime that happen in that particular neighborhood. Or um, it could be maybe you're at high risk for flood damage in your area. It doesn't have to be crime. It could be flood damage. Or, you know, it could be maybe you're in an area where there's 
wildfires a lot. Um, there could be some, you know, maybe you're in a flood plain for, um, for hurricanes and stuff. So those are like little things you have to think about. Around here, we're pretty much average to low. There's not really a lot here in Garner, so um, you can probably see low insurance. So let's say you're going for the 2040 coverage going for that one, and you're going for the $10,000 coverage for a property. So let's say this is your this is your premiums that you're picking. So, so I picked a new premium. So you are picking the, you're picking the low risk, or maybe that's what the insurance company picked for you. You pick low risk, but then they offer, do you want the 2040? You pick the 2040 coverage for personal property, or personal injury, and then you pick the 10,000 for property damage. Because maybe you just know that you're not gonna get any accidents or you're, gonna, you're not gonna drive it very often. So you're just gonna pick a lower property. I would pick higher on property than anything else. Um, but this you're covered. So this number right here was the 229. This number right here, the 10, was the 52. And they'll add these together. And so 229 plus 52. It's an 11 to carry a 1, that's an 8 and a 2, so 281. Is that right? 281. And that that might be your coverage um, for six months. Or maybe, depending on you know the company, maybe this company in particular, this is your payment per month. For one month. You have to pay 229 for one month of coverage. I don't know, it's usually six months. Just depends on what you know. What this is, this is. I think this is every six months for liability. It's usually really cheap. So, if that's every six months, you have two options with your insurance company. You can pay it every six months. So you'd have to come up with a two hundred eighty-one dollar check every six months, pay it to them. I know State Farm does that, um, Family Bureau, you know, all those insurance companies, Geico, all that. Or you can choose to do it per month. So, divide this. Take two eighty-one. Divide by six. And this is what you could choose to do, and this is what I do personally. So 281 divided by 6 is? 46. Okay. So 281, 281 divided by 6 80. was, say it again? 4683. 4683 repeating. 4683 with a 3 repeating. Okay. This, this is what I'm paying per month. That's what I do. I choose to pay per month. The reason why is I don't like to get that random bill six months from now. Like, hey, you got to pay, you know, $300 insurance. Ah, I didn't realize I had to pay that this month. All right, I'm just going to get out every month and I don't have to worry about it anymore. It just comes out automatically. And it comes out automatically. Automatically, don't have to worry about it. I'm covered. I never have to worry about, ah, I, got, I didn't save up for that check, you know. Or I, I had a bunch of bills that month and I didn't think about, well, now I'm covered. I paid it per month. Okay. Um, yeah, in, uh, liability is usually really cheap. Um, I have full coverage of my vehicles, and since I'm older, when you hit, when males, when you guys hit 25, your insurance drops significantly. My insurance dropped almost in half in, in cost when I turned 25. All I had on my car is our liability yeah. fee since they're older. And yep. And it's probably, um, and the smart thing right now is to have liability if you know you're not going to get in wrecks if it's an older vehicle. It's not worth a lot. Um, and then also be on your parents' insurance. That's a smart thing to do. Have your parents insurance because they get lower insurance rates than you would because they're older. Um, girls, you guys get lower insurance anyway. So uh, typically, like when I was in high school, I had higher insurance. I didn't have high risk. I didn't get any tickets or anything like that. But I had you know higher insurance than my female counterparts. Um, and so when I turned 25, my insurance came down to their rate, what they were getting, no matter what. So it was kind of wild just to see the difference in price. Uh, I had a particular young man in high school a few years ago, not here, but in her days, there, his insurance cost more per month than his vehicle payments did because he was at higher risk at the highest level, and he picked the highest level because he had a very expensive car, so he had to, and he was at high risk because he got a couple speeding tickets when he was 18, and so his his actual, like, payment per month was more than what he was paying on the car, the vehicle that he was driving. How did you get rid of that vehicle? Uh, yeah, it was it was worth something. It was it was a family heirloom. So, um, oh, yeah, it was a it was a it was a pretty uh, rough situation for that. 
Um, he had to really budget well for that, and that was something he wasn't prepared for, but also he did get speaking tickets, so he had to, he had to figure that one out. So that's kind of um, Yeah. So, but yeah, it's one of those things you don't think about it. Now, full coverage, same thing. You just, you cover it the same way. Um, you, you pick your plan. It's the same numbers. They just have higher values if you're in full coverage because now you're covering yourself and the others. So typically, it's not double. It's usually just a little bit higher. Um, but you pick your, you know, your coverages. You pick your properties and then you, your property damages and then you go from there. You can have different types of insurances. Um, you know, like with State Farm, they used to do this anyway. You could... You could bundle your home and your car loan and your um, and your oh, property wow. and all in one, and you get significant discounts. I don't think they do that anymore. They just have little packages. They that do you now. Um, there was a, a thing for a while that um, if you took out a loan with certain banks, uh, certain banks like Bank of America or uh, Wells Fargo, they would offer uh, lower insurances through your insurance company. They would they partner together with your insurance company to make sure they had lower insurances um, because um, a way the loan was taken out. Um, yeah, these are little things. Now, here's something you need to think about when you take insurance. It doesn't cover gap insurance. What gap is? Let's say you bought yourself a vehicle. Let's say you bought a $15,000 car, okay? You went out and bought a really kind of really nice car for your first car, okay? I consider 15000 you're going to get a really nice car. You can get some really nice cars for fifteen. And let's say you're making your payments, right? Da, 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 da. You made your payments and you picked very low payments, okay? Um, so you picked, you know, six years and you're paying maybe $100 a month, picking really low payments and you paid it off for a couple months and so maybe you're at 13,900 left on the loan, okay? And maybe this is like a year or two later. Now you made a couple, one or two years later. Okay. And you're down to 13 that you still own the loan, right? And you get in a wreck and it totals your vehicle. Here's the scary thing. The insurance company will look at what your value of your car is worth. Okay? Maybe your car is only worth $8,500. And you're like, well, I still owe thirteen nine on it. Yeah, they don't care. They're telling you what the car is worth compared to the market. Okay, so if it's worth 85, there is a significant gap here. You totaled your car. They're gonna pay you the $8,500 to get it replaced, but you still owe money on it. That's called a gap. That's called a gap between it. There is people out there, they total their car and they're still making payments on a car that they don't own anymore because they have to pay it off. The bank gave them an $8,500 check and they still have a gap. What is the gap between 13.9 and 85? What is that gap? It's like, what is that gap? That's four, um, 5,400 bucks. They're still paying $5,400 and probably in that loan, they're still paying that off, you know, per month for a vehicle they don't own anymore. Totaled out, they can't even drive you it. Can, you can ask for a rejudge on it and stuff. So you could. Now, it's also called gap insurance. When you get gap insurance, you have to do it when you first buy your vehicle from the dealership. It doesn't come from your insurance company. It's a part of the warranty packages. So you know how they say extended warranties and stuff, and it's usually just a big crime that they're offering you a bunch of stuff that they will never ever give you. But the thing you listen for is gap insurance. Like, oh, we'll cover gap insurance and we'll cover, you know, um, you know, windshield cracks and other things like those or you lost your key because getting a reprogrammed key for new cars are kind of expensive yeah, they are. Um, and sometimes like i know when my wife bought her ford it was cheaper going with the um it was it was actually cheaper going with the uh the actual full warranty than it was to like replace just a couple of the keys for the vehicle so we're like all right we'll go with the we'll go with the warranty for you know for 400 dollars extra and so the warranty also covered gap so if she got in a wreck and it wasn't worth very much, they would cover this difference and give you the check for the entire loan that you owe. And so now you're out of the vehicle and you didn't owe anything. Okay, does that make sense then? So gap insurance is good. You want to listen for that. Your insurance company will not offer that. It's got to be through warranties. But it's something you want to think about. There's other types of things that, um, that can be covered. <laughs> um, bless you. In terms of uh, um, you have a death in the family, unfortunately, right? 
um, your the loan could be paid off in terms of in terms of uh, your significant person that has the loan passed away. It could be paid off, and that's a part of you know gap, and it's also part of a um, uh, what do they call it? They call it um, mortality insurance. So if somebody were to pass away, um, the vehicle would be paid off and still yours. So it's a smart thing to do if you get older. Like I, I consider myself middle aged, but at some point, if I'm going to get a vehicle, I might actually consider it because I don't want to leave my wife with a loan for a car that she can't pay for. So it might be something I want to get. But again, I think I'm. I consider myself younger. I'm probably. I don't need it yet. I don't think I'm going to uh, pass away anytime soon. You don't soon. think you're going to grow so yet? I don't, I don't think so, but <laughs> <laughs> if you look at the numbers of my family, eh, I probably should get should get mortality insurance. Uh, but yeah, just little things you don't think about. All right, questions at all? Yeah, that's it for today. That was kind of weird and depressing. Uh, you still have the homework. You still have a worksheet that's due. It's due.